Hey everyone and welcome to Chalk It Up to Crops Educator Edition where we talk a little bit about things that you can do in the classroom. Today we're talking about Nearpod some more. So this is my Nearpod 2.0 video where I'm giving you a little bit more in-depth things that you can do with Nearpod and what makes it so awesome. To show you some examples, I'm going to click on this activity that I've already created. This is one that I have used with my students before and it is a wonderful review. So this is what the students would see and when this is actually open, they would be able to open a PDF which is right here. So they would be able to actually open up a PDF of an entire short story that I have added for them for the purposes of this Nearpod. And when they get done reading the story up on this Nearpod, they are able to then go to the next one and I give them some content that relates to the story that they read and then automatically I am able to give them a quiz. And what's great about this is they have read the story. I know that they read it because I had it up and on their screens for them to read it. And we're all working together. So now they get a little excerpt for the question. They get to answer their question. And when they click on the button, I automatically get to see who uh, understands the story, who understands the concept of irony. And we can then continue to move on. And for this one, I gave them a couple of different questions. Now, I did one question quizzes because I wanted them to look at one question, answer it, and I wanted to gauge how well they understood those specific types of questions but you can do quizzes as long as you want so if you wanted to have a 10 or 3 or 20 question quiz then you could definitely do that now I can also show you that when you are done with your Nearpod and your students have taken it they have reports and the wonderful thing about these reports is it gives you the numerical grade that your students would have made for that session. So I'm gonna look at this session right here. And for this one, it tells me that my students have 100%. So here, this is one that didn't have very many activities for them to do. I had a draw it activity, which I'll talk about in a minute. I had a open-ended question and I had this last one is just the participation so these are the two main activities that we had so this is one where it's just they did it or they didn't and it tells me and then it pops out a grade so it's real easy to add this in the grade book now we are going to go ahead and get started on how to set up your own Nearpod. So the first thing you do is click on your edit in Nearpod and there's two options you can add your slides, but again, I think that that looks a little boring, so I like to upload my files directly from Google Classroom because there's more that you can do with it. So I'm going to hit my drive. Now, one of the things that Nearpod lets you do, if you are uploading a PowerPoint presentation or a Google Slides presentation, you have the option to create a PDF viewer. What this would do is this would allow the students to scroll through the entire PowerPoint on slide one of the Nearpod and then all your activities could be at the end after they have gone through all of the original PowerPoint. So while you can upload a PDF viewer so that students can go all the way through your slides and then you can have activities at the end, I personally like to have my kids look at each individual slide because I like to add the activities in after each one or two slides just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, some of us have done quite a lot of work on making our Google Slides interactive. This one is definitely an interactive slide. So one of the things to remember is that if you have done this, when you add them to Nearpod, they are just screenshots. So if you click in where there's supposed to be a video, it's not going to actually be a video anymore. It's just going to be a picture. So for example, this is a video right here. I'm gonna preview this. Here we are, it's just a picture. So as 
I am uploading this, I have to remember to go back and add the videos. So how you would do that is you would click your add slide. Videos are content. So I'm going to click on add content and then I'm going to come over to video. So the video I want is in YouTube. Alright, so you can search your videos through a URL link or just search and see what they have. For me, this is the video that I had originally, so I definitely want to add it now. So I'm going to save that, and my video was added successfully. Awesome. So here, it always comes to the end when you add new slides and activities, so when you're trying to add activities to something that you've already created, then you need to remember to drag and drop. So here I am, now I've got my video where I want it, and I need to remember to delete this slide. So it's real easy, you just click on it, you hit backspace, and yes, I'm sure I want to delete it. Okay. So here is another thing that we need to look at. So because this was an interactive slide, I had asked students to answer some questions. Now this is a wonderful opportunity for these questions to be turned into open-ended questions. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to exit out of the student previewer and again I'm going to add a slot. This time I want to add an activity. The activity I want to do is add an open-ended question. Here I am going to be able to type the question that I want to add. So it's always a good idea to have the Google Slides that you are pulling into an earpod up so that you can do your alterations relatively quickly. Um, I like to just copy and paste the information so that I can make it relatively easy for myself. So here I have taken an open-ended question on Google Slides and turned it into an open-ended question here on Nearpod. Over here we have a timer, so it says add timer and you get to choose how much time you want it to take. Now I will say be careful with this option because sometimes if you give students too long then it just kind of messes with the whole engagement thing or if you don't give them long enough then students get upset and it's really hard to go back and give them more time. So again make sure that you do want to add the timer before you do it. You can also add references. So I really enjoy adding references, especially in English class. So I love being able to add a PDF viewer. I can give them text, I can give them short stories, you can give them audio if you want them to listen to something. It will take them directly to a web page where they have to research something and then come back and answer. So there's just a lot of fun things that you can do here and actually give them something really rigorous to do on your Nearpod that's not just the Nearpod. So here I'm going to do the video because that is what the question is all about. I'm going to come back here and copy this link so that I can find it. And voila, it pops up. We save it. And down to here, this is the option for students to record audio recordings instead of actually typing in their answers. It's in the beta section or beta trial, but it sounds like a really fun thing to do. I bet it would be awesome in the classroom. So you just hit save. It's gonna take a second to all upload and it's gonna pop it normally pops in the bottom of the screen, but I had just edited that one. So another thing that you can do is you can add a collaboration. So if you want to allow your students, instead of doing the open-ended question where students are not going to be able to see each other's answers, you can do the collaboration board, which I do talk about in another video, the earlier one. I'm going to show you how you can add a quiz. So we're going to add a slide and we're going to make it a quiz so you can look and see how this is. This is what the quizzes look like. So you enter your questions here and then you add your question options. For my Google Classroom, I had students watching this clip 
This is more of a open-ended question. However, I'm going to turn it into a quiz by allowing my students to choose from some options. Okay, so here we have our question. I have added in direct or indirect as my options. Make sure that you click the one that is correct so that the computer knows. And over here, you have your references. So just like before, you're able to add any one of these references, which is really awesome. They got a lot of fun stuff here. So again, I'm gonna use a video and I'm just going to pick a video that is relevant to the question. And also, you have a timer up here. So just like you can time the other activities, you can time your quizzes so that students are more um, prone to get the activities done. Now here, I'm going to add another question. You come down here and is Kevin Hart direct or indirect character? And again, I would put my options. I would choose my answer and I would give them the same reference as well. So once you have your quiz done, you hit save down here and it will again pop up as the very last slide. So you just kind of drag it to wherever you want it to go. Now another really awesome thing that you can do with Nearpod is once you have created a quiz, you can convert it to time to climb, which is super awesome. So it tells you, wait, are you sure you want to convert your quiz? Okay, and this is because the reference images will now transfer to your time to climb activity. However, other reference media and questions with more than one correct answer will not. Now that is not going to affect us because it's all a little different and we're gonna say yes and it says we're about to create time to climb from this slide. Do you want to keep a copy of the original slide? This is always a good idea because you never know if it's gonna be the way you want it. So this way you can preview these as a student and decide which one you like. So time to climb is a game. It has students answer the questions and usually you want more like five or six questions for time to climb because if a student gets one wrong, they go all the way back to the beginning. And if they get it right, then they get to climb all the way to the top. It's super fun for them. They love it. Another thing that we can do that's super cool is when you click on a slide, because it's like a screenshot, over here it says you can convert to a draw it, which is another activity. And I like to use these when we are practicing for marking up text and things like that, like our annotations. So here, it just very simply makes it a draw it so I can move it to where I want it. And to show you what this looks like, students will have this and there are different types of markers, text boxes. They can even add pictures. So they can click on the color they want and they just are able to do whatever it is that they need to do. Um, they can circle something, they can do matches where they have to draw the lines, they can annotate, put an arrow in. So here if you want them to type something, they can click on the T, they can enter some texts, they can write what they want to write, they can change the font, all this fun stuff. And then uh, the image gets submitted to you. So when you are getting your report, you're able to see what they drew and whether they participated or if they were just drawing all over the page. So once you're done adding in all the activities that you want where you want them, you click save and exit. Then of course it will have you add in all of your information. So for me, I would put pod lesson and you have to incorporate the grades for their own purposes. 
So it doesn't take too long, but you definitely want to know what you're getting into before you do decide to jump in. And I hope this lesson really helped you understand how to create a really amazing and engaging mirror pod and a little bit more information about how to add those fun activities. If you have any questions or comments that you would like to share, please post them down below. And if this video was just a little too advanced, please check out my Nearpod video 101 lesson up in the right corner. Click on that and get all the background information that you need to learn how to set up your account and start using Nearpod. If you already use it, that's awesome. Again, I hope this video helped you all. Please, please, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We need followers, and if you liked this, we want to keep making them for you. See you all next Wednesday for our next episode.